Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I commend you for holding this important hearing today, and I thank the witnesses for being here. Oil spill prevention and response capability was a major focus of mine when I was the chair of the subcommittee, and so I'm pleased that you're continuing to focus on such a vital issue. We did manage to significantly strengthen our nation's oil spill safety net in last year's Coast Guard bill, the biggest improvement since OPA 90, but there is much more to be done, particularly in light of what we have learned from the devastating deep water horizon spill. So I have many questions for the witnesses today on issues like steering restoration funds to the Gulf cleanup, which I support, and possibly earmarking offshore drilling revenues to states for coastal restoration, but I'm going to submit those for the record. Today, I was hoping to get some answers from our hearing today, Mr. Chairman, from the administration uh, witnesses on the emerging threat in the northwestern United States. As many of my colleagues probably know, Canada planned to double production for the Alberta massive tar sand fields over the next decade, and much of that oil will come to the U.S., but some would also likely to go to places like China. The nexus with this hearing is that much of that oil will be shipped by supertankers from Vancouver um, through the fragile waters of the San Juan Islands and the Strait of Juan de Fuca. This is a major threat to our region, and we have already accommodated oil tankers and barges carrying 15 billion gallons of oil, much coming from Alaska to Washington State's five refineries. In fact, we refine twice as much gasoline as we need in our state for consumption. So there is always a risk there, but we have tried to do our utmost to minimize that. The tanker transi transitioning Puget Sound need tug escorts, steered uh, pilots, and people that know our waters. Just like what happened with Prince William Sound, we need to have people on the ground who know what's happening. So we have a very robust oil spill response network in place, including vessel traffic control systems. Unfortunately, these systems seem to have led to a free ride for uh, Canada. It seems that the Canadian oil spill response plan in the Pacific Northwest is to call the Americans. An internal audit last year revealed that, quote, the Canadian Guard uh, Coast Guard lacks the training, equipment, and management systems to fulfill its duties in response to the offshore pollution incidents such as an oil spill. That is a scary situation for us in Washington State, particularly when uh, plans by one oil company alone would increase oil tanker traffic by 45 percent. And these super tankers we are talking about can hold up to a million barrels of oil. That's about four times what was spilled in the Exxon Valdez and covered 1,300 miles of what very pristine coastline. Obviously, such a spill in the narrow and heavily polluted waters of the Strait of Juan de Fuca would cause tens of billions of dollars in damage and have a significant impact. So with that, I will, Mr. Chairman, if I could just show a chart for, uh, that uh, shows you where this uh, vessel traffic goes. And uh, while it can go along the coast of uh, Vancouver Island and out the Strait of Juan de Fuca, you were talking about a very busy traffic area, very pristine uh, parts of both Canada and the United States, and I think it deserves a very robust oil spill response plan. So thank you for allowing me to make this opening statement. I'll look forward to having a chance to asking of our panels today questions. Thank you.